Miami lands Nathaniel Joseph out of Miami Edison, goes by Ray Ray, a dynamic playmaker, a wide receiver, 5'8", 170 pounds, a four-star recruit, someone that we got a chance to see quite a bit over the summer, either on seven-on-seven circuit stuff or at the Miami camps. Wherever he's at, whatever camp he goes to or games or whatever that might might be, he just makes plays. Joseph is a guy that I think has a really bright future at Miami, and I think he's definitely going to be someone that people should be excited about because he's a dynamic playmaker, get the ball in his hands, he can make moves, and I know Miami's been looking for that, guys that can make moves with the ball in their hands, that yards after catch will be big, a dynamic playmaker. There's no other way to put it with, with Ray Ray here. Yeah, Ray Ray is a big time playmaker out of the slot. I mean, we talk about, I think one thing maybe Miami struggled with in 2022 is just the yards after catch, you know, kind of making a play on the ball and then, you know, earning a little bit more after that. Ray Ray Joseph, I mean, you turn on the tape, he makes dudes miss. He throws tacklers off of him. He's not, he's not a guy that's, you know, an easy takedown. Yeah, he might be smaller in stature at 5'9, 170 pounds. But he, this is a guy that has some juice, has the will to kind of push the ball forward. And he has that elite speed. I mean, when you're talking slot receivers across the country, I don't think they come much better than, than Nathaniel Ray Ray Joseph. Probably a guy that can get it done on, on, you know, maybe at the high school level on the outside. But when he focuses in on that slot, I mean, I see him being a guy that gets on the field early for Miami, ends up being an, a, a contributor uh, pretty soon, especially as a kid that's going to be, that's going to get to campus early here in January. Uh, I mean, Ray Ray Joseph in every in every environment that I've watched him in, whether that be seven on seven, whether that be on Friday nights at Traz Powell or anywhere else. I mean, he 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 just steals the show. He's just an all a big big time playmaker. Going back to his recruitment, I mean, Miami kind of had to flip him from Georgia when they got there. I mean, Clemson. I mean, not from Georgia, from Clemson when they got there. Uh, he gave he gave the Tigers Dabo Sweeney his early pledge. And, uh, you know, Coach Cristobal and all those guys, Josh Gaddis, David Cooney, uh, they went to work with trying to flip him, and they eventually won out this past summer when they were able to do so. And Ray Ray Joseph has been a great advocate for the program, uh, uh, you know, one of those social media recruiters, uh, an ambassador, if you will. And uh, I really, I think just a guy that I could see uh, Coach Cristobal taking with him to ACC Media Days, you know, when, when that time comes for him later in his career, because he is that type of dude, high GPA kid, high moral character kid and uh, just uh, the type of guy that it feels like Coach Cristobal wants to bring to Miami. You know, we touched on his attributes as a player, everything he's bringing to the table. You touch on some intangibles, some off the field type stuff. You know, for me, you know, touched on that Clemson commitment before he was committed to Miami, watching film and watching him and getting to know him as a prospect, as a player. He was one, one of my favorite guys in this class. Before he was committed to Miami, he was someone I enjoyed watching, covering, paying attention to. And, and for, for Miami to get him in this class, I, I just think he's got a very bright future for anybody that that asked about him, I was always, you know, singing his praises because I just thought this guy was really dynamic. And again, you, yes, the 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 physical stature, you know, he's not one of these big tall guys, but dynamic playmaker and, and a guy that just gets it done. I, I like that. I like his mentality. I like the way what he's bringing to the field. His mentality with how he approaches the game. A competitive guy. Once again, a guy that they got the ball to. You know, Edison. They tried. You know, watching some film. You know, they're trying to do handoffs. I mean, they're doing whatever they could to get him the ball, and he would just rack up catches. We've touched on the yards after catch, and I think that will be big. I think he's a guy that can make an immediate impact. Once again, a guy that could make an impact on special teams if they want to go that route. But certainly, I think he's got a bright future. He's someone that people should be excited about. And I know sometimes you look at rankings and you wonder, is it going to translate? I'd be so I'd be shocked. If, if Ray Ray doesn't have a really productive career at Miami. Wide receiver Robbie Washington out of Miami Palmetto signs with the Miami Hurricanes. He's one of these guys that's certainly fun to watch. A very competitive wide receiver, four-star recruit, top 30 in the country according to the 24-7 sports composite rankings. There's a lot to like about him, but in particular with me, all the times I've seen him, I really like his competitiveness, that fire, that desire, and he's going to head-to-head with anybody that steps across the field from him. Yeah, I, Chris, I mean, the way you describe Robbie Washington is that he's a dog, right? I think that, uh, you know, you mentioned the competitiveness. I mean, he is, he is that guy. He has, he wants the ball in his hands and people might take that the wrong way. Like if he doesn't, he's going to pout around, but he, he, I think he's a high level teammate too. I think, you know, I've watched him multiple times on the sidelines, encouraging his quarterbacks, you know, talking to his guys, all those different types of things, wanting, you know, celebrating others' success. 
Uh, you know, Robbie Washington is a competitor through and through. I think from a mentality standpoint, he's exactly what you want to bring to this wide receiver room. You know, five foot 10, 185 pounds. Some people might think that that means he's a slot guy. I don't think that that's the plan for him at all. I think he could definitely do that, but he seems like a versatile, you know, type of receiver who could probably play some X. I, you know, play, play in the slot. I think that's the plan for him is for him to play mostly outside, you know, be able to kick inside and do, you know, be able to line him up, move him around um, all over the field. I mean, I see the 24 seven sports comparison and I saw Anaya Smith. I mean, I, we watched, we watched Texas A&M play earlier this year, Chris, and we watched the way that Jimbo Fisher kind of moved him around. And I very, I can definitely see Robbie Washington being of that mold, um, you know, really electric. I mean, I think that's a way to do it. I mean, we talked about, you know, some guys with a high end speed. I think Robbie Washington has a lot of that too. And then he's just kind of locked. He's just kind of like lightning in a bottle. You know, he can make you miss in a phone booth. He's physical. Uh, you know, he can definitely fight for those extra yardages. And then, uh, you know, definitely a confident kid. I think, again, when you're looking at the state of Miami's receiver room, it seems like Robbie Washington has the right mentality uh, in terms of what this room needs to add. I think that they're trying to change a little bit of that. And Robbie Washington is someone who's going to come in there and, I think bring definitely bring some juice to Josh Gaddis's room. You know, you, you touched on some of the things and ways he can be used, and, and that's what stands out to me too. Just being out there, there's a practice I went to that stood out to me. Lining up one on one, trying to go to the outside. He likes to go deep on guys, try to to beat corners one on one coverage, looking to go in the end zone there. But also, you know, he could get on, on some drag routes, you know, go across the middle, catch some passes in that way. But like you said, he's a guy who wants the balls in his hands, has a ch chance to make people miss. He's trying to make people miss. He wants to keep it going, get to the end zone with big plays. And, and like I said, the mentality, you're always looking for that with guys as they make the transition to the next level. How will it translate? Because certainly there's a lot you have to have physically to make it at the next level. But certainly with the competition, either at practice or even just for playing time, going up against these other guys, you've got to pass some guys up. So it certainly gets competitive out there not within your own room, not just who, who you go against. But I think he's got the right mentality and certainly one to watch for in the future at Miami. Miami lands a big-time tight end, number four tight end in the country, according to the 24-7 sports composite rankings. And Riley Williams out of IMG Academy, one of four guys from IMG coming to the Hurricanes. There's a lot to like about Riley, six foot six, 240 pounds. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a big-time tight end, right? This is the way you kind of draw them up when you're, when you're kind of scouring through the country looking for potential tight ends. I mean, Riley Williams is definitely – you know, he definitely checks a lot of the boxes in terms of what you're looking for physically, what you're looking for, you know, in terms of uh, being a receiving threat. I know at a, you know, at, in, as a junior at his, uh, at his, at his school in Oregon, he was, you know, probably the team's top pass catcher. I think he had close to 700 yards receiving, receiving came down to IMG Academy to cap off his high school career. And then, you know, just kind of physically continued to mature there. I mean, up to 240 pounds, um, you know, again, this is the type of dude that you want to recruit. And when you're looking at the national landscape of, of top tight ends, Riley Williams, I think is, you know, right in the mix of all the top names that you sort of read about. Again, like I mentioned earlier, Portland, Oregon native, his older brother played for Mario Cristobal at Oregon. The family's bought in with the program again, moved him down to the sunshine state so he could start getting acclimated to the weather and get a, get, get into a, a, a big time strength and conditioning program over at IMG before he's, you know, gets to Coral Gables and, Again, this is uh, there's opportunity with Will Mallory leaving. Uh, maybe you know potentially you know some other guys coming back on the roster. Uh, I think the expectation is that Riley Williams comes in and and tries to get them some help. You know, and watching Riley at the UA Future Fifty over the summer, a lot of highly talented guys there. And what you like to see is from a Miami commit is if they stand out. Do they live up to the ranking? I, I think there was no question that Riley Williams certainly was one of the best tight ends in the country, one of the best guys we saw there making plays. You know, he can also stretch the field, which you like at the tight end spot. He looks like he's got good hands. He moves well. He's certainly someone that you can build upon because there's a lot to like about, again, with his frame, his ability to catch passes. I like how he can kind of move around a little bit, and I know that's what Miami likes with their tight ends and – they want to keep this tight end production thing going. It has been like this at Miami for a number of years, over the years, and, and regardless of who's coaching or what the offense looks like, Miami has always had tight ends, and I think Riley Williams certainly likes that, in addition to those things you just mentioned about his ties to Cristobal. Yeah, and then, you know, the impressive, an impressive catch radius, you know, has the, the verified athleticism, has a strong basketball background. I know he got it done on the hardwood, too, which is, also, which is always a promising, 
you know, you know, I guess factor, I guess, for tight ends. I mean, there's a lot of really great tight ends across, you know, NFL history that at one point were considered basketball players. So I think uh, all that type of stuff all translates to the gridiron. And Riley Williams is one of those guys that Miami beat out some heavy, heavy hitters for. I mean, he took official visits to Alabama and Ohio State. I think Oregon was in there for much of his recruitment too. But I mean, Miami won out a recruitment that could have gone a different direction to another national powerhouse. So uh, you know, this was just an absolutely huge win for Mario Cristobal, for Coach Stephen Field, who has really done a great job bringing in tight ends over the past few cycles. So I think you got to tip your cap there. And uh, Riley Williams, again, I mean, the, this is the way you want your tight ends to look. And I think Miami's slowly starting to build this roster back, you know, across multiple levels, really, to the way it should look at the Power 5 level and beyond in terms of being a national contender. So Riley Williams is a big-time addition at a position that, uh, you know, that really Miami wants to utilize and kind of, you know, factor into this offense. Miami picks up a very interesting, intriguing tight end in Jackson Carver, 6'6", 220, a really interesting athletic background from hockey, lacrosse, whatever it might be. But he's certainly someone that, that has some upside, certainly somebody that loves the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, you mentioned the background. I mean, we're super impressive. I think he was on, like, some sort of USA junior national team, uh, you know, you know, on skates, uh, was at one time a, a Notre Dame lacrosse commit. Uh, I mean, kind of, re, I think, reclassified, you know, kind of went to, you know, a prep school uh, to, you know, be a part of the class of 2023, wanted to play tight end. I mean, really got some intriguing, you know, so really some big time looks. LSU, uh, I mean, people forget the day he committed to Miami, he basically decided he wasn't going to take an unofficial visit to Alabama where he could have potentially earned an offer from the Crimson Tide. So Jackson Carver shut it down, uh, picked Miami back whenever, I mean, whenever he committed. So I guess, you know, in June after an official visit weekend, uh, this is someone that, you know, definitely has the athletic upside, those types of things, things that you're looking for in a tight end. Again, it does have a mean streak. I mean, you watch some of the hockey clips. He's definitely not afraid to hit. If you're a lacrosse player, you better be physical, especially if you're going to play at Notre Dame. So I think in terms of those things, I mean, Jackson Carver has a promising uh, you know, future, if nothing else, as an inline tight end, as a guy that can definitely help, you know, kind of maintain the edge as a blocker, uh, but also is a threat to to catch the ball and is more and can definitely move uh, the way a tight end should be able to move. So, you know, maybe someone that's going to have to come on a little bit from a developmental standpoint, he's going to maybe have to adjust being that he's kind of fresh to the game of football. But I think if he kind of puts it all together, uh, Jackson Carver might have the highest upside of potentially any of these tight ends that Miami's bringing in. So a lot to be excited about with him. Yeah, and that's what you like uh, is upside of a guy that's not highly regarded, you know, three-star recruit, number 30 in the country, according to the composite rankings by 24-7 Sports. But again, you touched on some upside stuff, and that's certainly what Miami likes as a staff. They, they like this background, also the potential to get better, and it will be up to Jackson, you know, how quickly he can acclimate. And sometimes when guys get into an environment at the college level, they can really accelerate their growth process, you know, really focus in on football, having to be good, you know, having to be competitive, whether it's other tight ends or defensive players, he's certainly going to get a taste of what it takes at the next level. So Jackson's a guy that has a good mentality. Like I mentioned, he loves Miami. He's been really staying in tune to what's going on with the Hurricanes, their program, the recruiting class. He definitely seems excited about this next step. And again, someone to watch. You no, know, I think he's someone that's going to have no trouble throwing on, you know, 15, 20 pounds once he gets inside Miami's strength and conditioning program. I can see him being a physical specimen here in a few years down down the line. A lot to be excited about. And uh, you mentioned a lot of those things that, you know, he he's kind of been an advocate for the program. He's been the guy that, you know, kind of, you know, super vocal, all those things. I think my favorite thing that Jackson Carver has done so far, though, is uh, when Coach Cristobal and Coach Field have gone up to visit him at his home here over the last few weeks, you just see the fields of just white cloudy snow. Jackson Carver just standing outside weathering weathering all that in just basketball shorts and a t-shirt. So he's definitely built different, not one of the traditional South Florida kids. Uh, I know Boston College, I believe, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, is one of Miami's uh, every year opponents from this point on. I could definitely see him being one of those guys that in late October, early November, Miami's playing in Chestnut Hill and Jackson Carver walks out of the tunnel with like no shirt on, just trying to like, you know, just kind of wearing all the the, the fringe weather up there. I mean, I'm really excited about his future. And I think, if, again, if he puts it all together, man, I think he's going to be a great one here. 